Hello folks and welcome to Sound Codex. In this video I'll show you my new creation Rand O Drum. Rand Drum. Rand Drum is a drum machine with built-in sequencer developed in plug data and it is entirely based on stochastic processes where future events are not predictable but are defined by probability distributions. The probability table determines how likely it is for all of the eight drum parts like kick, hi-hat or snare to play at various points in the sequence. Before we dive into the interface to see how all this works, let's take a quick sound demo. And remember that all sounds you're gonna hear in this demo are 100% audio synthesis based, so no samples involved. All drum parts, except for the snare sound, are always varied in pitch, decay, overall length, saturation level. In this way, what you experience is a constantly evolving rhythmical and timbrical stream of sound. The best way to use it is as an auxiliary drum machine. Auxiliary, let me explain why. When we're writing a drum part, it always helps to have a consistent element like a straight, straight kick or a pulse that gives us a sense of time. Well, Rundle Drum doesn't do this because you can end up with pretty wacky uh, drum parts like this one. So try loading a super simple drum loop like this 4 fourth very basic techno kick and then turn on Randa Drum. It will inject a layer of constant rhythmical variations, rhythmical and timbrical variations, transforming a super basic and plain uh, drum part into something really intriguing. And how about drum and bass? At the bottom we have the distribution table. This is used, as I told you before, to define how likely it is for a certain drum parts to play in the sequence. So A is linked to the kick sound, and if I bring this slider up, it will increase the probability that a kick sound will play in the sequence. Now remember that the probability that a sound will play is always relative to the number of active sliders. In this example, the kick slider is on and it's the only one, so I'll hear kick only. Now, if I set the slider C, which is linked to the snare sound, 50% chance to play a kick sound, 50% chance to play a snare sound. Let's take a listen. Now, if I bring up the second slider, which is linked to the hi-hat, now the probability will be 33% each. From these squared display, you can easily understand which voice is playing. 
Now you can randomize the distribution by clicking on this black dot. This will generate random distributions based on purling noise. So let's take a listen to this one. And of course, you can adjust this sequence manually. Let's say that I don't want the snare sound and I want to increase the FM bass probability. I can increase the clock speed from one quarter note to one eighth. Triplet and sixteenth. You can also automate the time subdivision by clicking this automate toggle. This will use an external clock source which is not linked to your DO tempo to change the time subdivision here. So let's take a listen. You can use this horizontal radio with three states to set the probability at which a rest will be introduced in the sequence. 0% chance, 20% and 50%. So let's take a listen. 0%, 20%, 50%. The toggle under slider A is an experiment because I wanted to unlink the kick sound from the distribution table. So if you press this toggle, the first slider will disappear, so we cannot tweak its distribution anymore. And the idea behind this choice, which again, again, it's kind of an experiment, so um, I'm not 100% sure if I will implement this with all seven voices. But the idea is that some elements, like the kick sounds, needs to be played and repeated at a constant pace. So let's take a listen. This is with the kick sound linked to the distribution. Unlinked. And as we change the clock speed, when we unlink that sound from the distribution table, it will link to the main tempo, the time subdivision. On the bottom right corner, we have the main output volume that you can use to set the overall loudness of the run the drum synth and talking about volume on the top of the ui we have the main mixer these sliders are associated to the slider before so in this example this slider can control the volume of the fm bass this one the volume of the kick sound and so on if you want to mute a sound you have two approaches the first one, you can bring down the volume or you can bring down the probability that that sound will play in the sequence. The second choice is the best one because it's more efficient in terms of CPU usage. Last but not least, we can talk about this section, which is dedicated to the volume modulation. Yeah, because with the Rando Drum, we can automate the volume for any of the eight voices. So you can toggle, you can activate this toggle and the default waveform triangle will be active. As you can see, each of the eight sliders has a randomly choose frequency. Let's take a look, for instance, to this last slider. It has a pretty rapid pace, isn't it? Now, if I stop the LFO section and reactivate it, it will uh, generate random speeds, random frequencies for these LFOs. And now we can clearly see that this last slider has a much slower pace.
You can add an offset to all these LFOs by increasing this knob. And of course, you can change the waveform from triangle to saw tooth, from saw tooth to square wave. We can adjust the overall volume range with these two tiny sliders. So I want to limit the maximum amplitude. I don't want it to be one, one it's here on top. And I don't want the LFO to bring the volume down to zero. So I can increase this bottom slider. One last thing before ending this video, make sure to install on your computer the same font I used for the UI. It is called Squared, it is 100% free and you'll find it in the same folder where I'll put the Randodrum patch. Randodrum is available on my Patreon page, link in the video description. Don't forget to let me know your thought on this with a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao ciao! Thank you.